So uh, this is uh, indeed um, a special pleasure for me. Uh, I, our partnership with Profam is one of the most rewarding uh, experiences I personally have had, and it's uh, it's great uh, privilege to be able to report on some of the some of the results that we that we have from the research that has. Um, <coughs> Uh, research with Pratham. Um, our work with Pratham started, I believe, in 1999. So we're just completing 10 years of that, that work. In the process, we have uh, evaluated Pratham programs now in uh, five, we are either evaluating or evaluating Pratham programs now in five states. Uh, the program, in a sense, has always been similar. It's the, the, the Read, what, what Read India is the evolved version of a program that we first encountered in Baroga, and then it was called the Balsaki program. And it's, it, the motivation from the program comes from, from Pratham's, uh, Pratham's concern with uh, delivering quality education. So Pratham's uh, focus uh, this used to be the slogan, every child in school and learning well. And I think the well is uh, very important in, I think, understanding what this program is supposed to deliver. It's supposed to, it is supposed to be a, uh, the, the motivation for this program comes from trying to deliver quality, but trying to, call, to deliver quality at very low cost under relatively adverse circumstances. Um, the, so, uh, in the, the original versions of this program, as I said, the Balsaki program that we first encountered in 1999, uh, were programs which were essentially intended to provide additional resources to the schools uh, through a Pratham trained volunteer who would work in the schools. And since then, um, this basic idea of a, of a volunteer uh, a, a volunteer-driven program was expanded, and that's that's a program that we also encountered in Bombay and in and in and much later in 2004-5 in in Jhumpur district in East UP. And each time this program was had evolved, the materials had evolved, uh, the ideas had become more refined, but the basic motivation remained to provide. Um, and the basic motivation always had two elements in it. One was, uh, as I said, I think in my previous talk, you must be getting really bored of hearing me, um, to identify who the weaker performing children are, finding a way to identify them effectively, and then to deliver to those children a, a particular pedagogy which was relatively designed to be relatively uh, easy to implement, which could be implemented by trainers who were not, who did not have that much training, the typical training was per week, and then with that training, this, the idea was that these volunteers could, could, could deliver uh, something useful, not necessarily to the children who had already learned all the skills, but at least to the children who were sitting in class, uh, often uh, having it for three or four years, without knowing how to read at all. And so there was a, the program had a very specific target, a specific target group, and a very specific idea, which is that there are certain children, classes of children who are, who are in class, who can be taught, but who don't get taught. Um, so there is a, so I think what Read India eventually became is, is was this program uh, for helping these, this, this set of children. What the great innovation of what now Read India, uh, what's now about Read India is, is to extend the, this program to cover uh, government school teachers. So the, I think the big, big step that Pratham decided to take about three years ago is to train and provide academic support to government school teachers. Uh, and uh, they so, Part of that program was to design materials that would be provided to schools. Um, and in upping the um, ambition of the program, one of the things they did 
was they said, look, we can also produce material also at low cost and also material that we use by an extra, you know, uh, without a great deal of extra training that could even help children, uh, children um, who have already learned to uh, learn to read. Um, so rather than while the original impetus of the program came from dealing with these children who could not read at all, the, the, this later stage of the program <coughs> also added a component which instead of where uh, they, instead of the motivation being learning to read, the motivation was reading to learn. So the idea was to create materials that children who have learned one to read could use on their own to carry on their learning process. So, um, so the big pieces of the of this. So these were this is this is this is what um, and Sanjay is here. Sanjay has actually done it. He will actually tell you in much more uh, in richer detail what this program entails. But this this was a this was in some sense the broad concept as we understood it. Um, it is uh, in Bihar and uh, also in Uttarakhand. Uh, uh, which were among the several states in which Prakam has these partnerships, but I think Bihar is one of the states where the Prakam partnership is most well developed, and we're very lucky to have Mr. Bhushan here to to also who's who's worked with Prakam and who has a very who, who was just telling me that the government's partnership with Prakam is of a very long standing um, to to embody this program quite. Uh, quite deeply into the government's overall strategy for education. So th this 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 particular approach here is works very closely with the government system, including repeated training and uh, and lots of material that are supplied to, supplies to schools. Uh, JPL and Pratham uh, have partnered to evaluate the impact of Read India, both in Bihar and in Uttarakhand. Uh, the basic basic. As, as you probably now kind of figure, we, we do randomized evaluation. This was a randomized evaluation. Uh, there, there were three elements. We wanted to know separately the impact of three, the three distinct elements in the program. There was the, the training of teachers and school teachers, uh, I'm sorry, teachers, training of teachers, there was the materials for the schools and this volunteer support. And these were, in principle, three different ingredients. And you could imagine that one of them is very useful, but the other others are not so useful. And so, in particular, we were motivated by the idea, is it enough to just give the schools the material and walk away and figure out that they could use it one, one way or the other? Or do we need, to, is it needed to, that the teachers get trained to use the material? Is it needed that the volunteers are needed to support the teachers? So all of those questions, sort of the graded questions from one extreme of having just the material to the other extreme of having all three were made into treatments. So there are three different treatments. The schools were randomly chosen into three different groups. The first one gets all of these things. Uh, volunteers, uh, training, teacher training, monitoring materials. Second one gets materials, but no teaching, teacher training, but no volunteers. The third one just gets materials. So this, the the design of this of this intervention was very much intended to support it, support separate these things. In Uttarakhand, um, there was a, a slightly different comparison that was made. Uh, the first one got, there was no pure material intervention, partly because the materials had already been, some of the schools had already got the material. The program had already started working with some of the schools before, and they already had, some of them had the materials, and because of other logistic re reasons, the, the, the Pratham trained local volunteers were supposed to produce tutoring during school hours and after hours. So the, the, the models are slightly different. Mm. In addition, in Bihar, uh, in summer 2008, the government organized a one-month summer camp in 18 districts, totaling 118 villages. Pratham assisted the government in running these camps, which were specifically designated for low-performing children who were identified by, by the schools. Uh, the aim, aim was, as I keep saying, was to identify these children, once they identify the parents fallen behind, to provide them with those key little inputs that would allow them to catch up. So the idea was that even though these, you know, even 
though these children have fallen behind, a small amount of help by these volunteers who are trained just for a week basically is enough perhaps to push them uh, along the path to um, a much improved education. The basic, basic monitoring uh, evaluation involves a, a, a baseline, a midline, and an endline. Um, and uh, the, there's also a very detailed monitoring of, of what's going into school, uh, go, what's going on in the schools. And in addition, there is very, I think one of the unique products of this will be a very, very rich set of measures of competencies of the children. So uh, the, there's a lot, a lot of effort went into designing the tests for these children and then having good assessment tool for them. So most or mostly, having told you all that and got you all excited about what's coming, but really we don't have any results yet. The reason is that the study is not over. Now, to compensate, we have one set of results. The ones that the results are actually quite remarkable. The results from the summer camp. Remember, the summer camp just lasts for one month. This, this is voluntary. Children are, you know, there's much less pre pressure on the children. Uh, given, and, you know, not surprisingly, only a quarter of the children who were intended to attend, attended. That's not surprising. It's summer camp. I probably wouldn't have gone to summer camp if I had, they, they had a choice. Nonetheless, what you see the, despite the fact that this is summer months, summer camp, during vacation, etc., and that the inputs are provided by volunteers who don't have a lot of advanced training, these are typically people who don't even have a college degree, the impact is very substantial. Um, if you look at the people who, so basically if you think of a scale of one to five, where one is uh, not being able to read at all, or zero is not being able to read at all, and five is able to read stories, uh, on that scale, the people who were close to zero or one, people who could read nothing, or could, people who could read uh, just letters, each progress on average by about a half a point. So some of them, that means some of them by go two points, some of them go zero, obviously not everybody proceeds at the same rate, but basically they're, they're moving half the distance to the next stage. And that's, if you think of the kind of you know, way education works, uh, this, this do, does this mean that some of these children have progressed quite a long way and others haven't progressed at all, but given the magnitude of the intervention, how small it is, this is a remarkable, remarkable and exciting result. Um, I think more generally, I think it's, uh, this is something I've already said, I'll just say uh, this one more time because it seems so important. I think one insight from this work, Jepal's other work in India with Pratham and elsewhere, and elsewhere with, not with Pratham, that many children in children's school who are, who are very easy to teach who are not learning. These children often are those who are class three or four or five and have not learned what they should have learned in class one. And I think that this is a margin where the bang for the buck is potentially huge, precisely because these children are in school, they don't need to be attracted to school, they don't need to be given incentives to come, so they come into school every day, they're not learning. This is a set of children for whom the just the fact that they're completely neglected by the system often is the problem, and, it, and, a, and a shift to just identifying them and helping them without really investing huge amount of resources can actually make a material difference to their lives. So this, in some sense, I find this an, exci an exciting result because it's something that's come out of our research, not just in India, but all over the world, that this particular kind of strategy can make a big, big difference to children. And, uh, and I think that that's, that has made us, um, you know, uh, I think very excited about, about uh, the potential for scaling the, these ideas and finding ways to make them even more effective. Thank you very much.